All right. So um, here is uh, Frau Brucha, uh, oh. Ursula von der Leyen, Leyen uh, the head of the EU. Now, this is a couple of months ago, warning people about the dangers of populists taking over the EU. Putin's friends are trying to rewrite our history and hijack our future. They are spreading hate from behind their keyboards. And let there be no doubt what's at stake in these elections. Our peaceful and united Europe is being challenged like never before by populists, by nationalists, by demagogues, whether it's the far right or it's the far left. All right, so she was not happy this week. Europe's night of election drama capped by Macron bombshell. France's president, Emmanuel Macron, has called a bombshell snap parliamentary election after being defeated by the far right in the European elections in a night of drama that overall saw the center right tighten their grip on the EU parliament. Mr. Macron made the announcement after losing to his rivals Marine Le Pen and Jordan Bardella and their national rally party. France's result was one of the big gains that Europe's far-right parties had expected, and confirmation came with all the exit polls, giving national rally more than 30% of the vote, double that of Mr. Macron's centrist Renaissance party. Um, now, I'm just going to say this once. These papers define these ideological lanes the way that they want to. I don't think there's anything really centrist about a deeply unpopular agenda that people hate so much that they would vote for Marine Le Pen in twice the numbers they're voting for you. But all right, they're going to call that centrism. Uh, so let's see uh, what we're calling the French HRC moment. This is the Javits Center. Moment. No! 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 J'ai décidé de vous redonner le choix de votre Je dis soudon. Sacre bleu! <laughs> they, were, they were very surprised about this. I don't know. After, 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 I, I'm not saying I'm a fan of Marine Le Pen, but those of us who lived through 2016, you just can't help but kind of enjoy neoliberals freaking out no matter well, what were they announcing they there? It was a foreign their, language. They, they, they were, they were announcing the election results. Oh, I thought it was like a mandatory uh, shaved armpit law, mandatory deodorant law. That, mandatory. You know, that would that that yeah. would never that would never pass. Yeah. Even well, the neo libs would not. E yeah. e e even even the even the uh, wef would not go so far. <laughs> yeah. They would never try to impose that on the French people. But beyond France, it's going to be funny when our numbers come out next month and we have like a 50% drop off of French audience. <laughs> uh, but beyond France, the broader story of Europe's four-day vote marathon really belonged to the parties of the center right. They strengthened their majority in the European Parliament with victories in Germany, Greece, Poland, and Spain and significant advances in Hungary against long-dominant Prime Minister Viktor Orban. Quote, The center is holding, but it is also true that the extremes on the left and on the right have gained support, said Ursula von der Leyen, the center-right head of the European Commission, now on course for a second term. Ms. von der Leyen said her center-right group was an anchor of stability, but such a result required great responsibility for the parties in the center. You know, it, it would help you to sell that if you did, were not so much uh, a uh, a femme fatale from a James Bond movie. Right, yeah. You know, that, that's the one he screws in Monaco, tries to shoot him in the, in the <laughs> yeah. next scene. Um, the far right did not She looks enjoy... like the one who would try to knife you during the act. You know, like basic instinct. Yeah, you know, exactly. Reaches yeah, for the she ice has pick. it under the pillow. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, 
Hello, Mr. Bond. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you enjoy our evening of pleasure? Now <laughs> it is time to die. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the far right did not enjoy as great a surge across Europe as many had predicted. In the Netherlands, anti-Islam populist Geert Wilder's Freedom Party came second. And in Belgium, the separatist Vlaams Belang lost out to the nationalist New Flemish Alliance. Uh, so, so you have you have a lot of a lot of people on the right really celebrating this result, and something they particularly enjoyed was uh, seeing the prime minister weep. Um, great news from EU Parliament elections keep coming nonstop. Hamas supporting oh, prime minister guy. of Belgium yeah. Alexander de Croo <laughs> announced his resignation. May Europe get rid of all its jihadist supporters soon. Uh, so. You know, they say there's no crying in baseball, but apparently there is crying in Belgian politics. I'm just going to say, man up. You know, never let them see you cry. Uh, Europeans in 27 countries voted in these elections to elect the next EU parliament, with the majority of voting happening on Sunday. The European parliament is the direct link between Europeans and the EU's institutions. There had been talk before the vote that Ms. von der Leyen's dominant European People's Party might consider talking to the two right-wing groups that house the far right, but she made clear the EPP's only allies would be the Socialists and Democrats and the liberal Renew group that includes Mr. Macron's party. While the center-right has a commanding 184 seats in the 720-seat European Parliament, the S&D has not lost grounds, and the centrists are still third despite a big drop in seats. Now, now I just want to point out uh, Ms. von der Leyen. Uh, her party is considered center-right in Europe, um, which really reinforces what we're always saying. In Europe, the Democrats would be a center-right party because she sounds like a Democrat. And when given the option of working with the right, she would rather work with the socialists and the Democrats. And that that's center right in Europe. Right. Um, so this is I don't know how well we're going to be able to really see this. Um, so these are the results. Let me see if I blow it up a little bit. Um, OK, so the socialists and the Democrats, as they say, didn't really lose any seats. They had 140. They're down to 139. The Greens got killed. And this is this is something you also saw in Ireland, which we'll get into. Um, I think the farmer rebellion and people's feelings about energy prices may be partly driven by uh, the Nord Stream, which very mysteriously got put out of commission, uh, might be part of it. Uh, Renew Europe uh, also lost a lot of seats um, from 102 to 80. Uh, the European People's Party uh, gained some seats, 184 versus 177. Conservatives and reformists picked up five seats. Um, and then the others stayed pretty much the same, although independents lost five seats. Um, so you could see, like, really the gains, as, as they point out, are mostly concentrated in the center right. Uh, Germany's opposition conservatives were always going to come out on top, and they scored an impressive 30% of the vote. But for Chancellor Olaf Scholz's SPD party, this was the worst ever result in a European election, coming third behind the far-right alternative for Germany. The victorious, that doesn't sound ominous at all. The victorious head of the conservative CDU, Frederick Mertz, 
said it was a disaster for the three-party ruling coalition, and he called for a change of tack. Quote, they're damaging our country with the kind of politics they do. The AFD has endured a slew of scandals involving espionage, foreign interference, and allegations of Nazi sympathies, and yet its support still held up. Quote, after all the prophecies of doom, after the barrage of the last few weeks, we are the second strongest force, and I'm telling you the only way is up, said co-leader Alice Wydell. Um, we have some footage of Alice Wydell. Let's, uh, let's see who this rising star in German politics is. Oops, sorry, I thought you needed me to cue that. Need to be closed. Illegal mi- the borders need to be closed. Illegal migrants need to be rejected without any exceptions. Anyone who stays here without authorization must be deported. Criminals, terrorists, and social fraudsters who have been fraudulently naturalized must surrender their German passport. Dear friends, this and only this is the sole thing that we comprehend and interpret as remigration without any other variations or interpretations. All right. Well, they are playing the classics there. I gotta say, on the plus side, she does look just like George Washington. You she, know? she kinda does. She looks just like him. I haven't seen that hair in a while. That's like George, that's like founding father's hair. <laughs> that was uh that was the after party. There you go. Alexander uh, Hamilton. She looks like a founding father that with that hair. She, she kinda does. Yeah. She lead it leading Germany to a new future. Yes. Very statesmanlike. Uh, yep. Uh, meanwhile, a new anti anti migrant far left party, BSW, led by charismatic left wing firebrand Sarah Wagenecht, also performed well, rounding off a good night for radical parties. In Spain, the center right opposition Popular Party defeated Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez's socialists but not by the big margin that PP leader Alberto Nunez Fehu had been hoping for. Meanwhile, in Italy, Georgia Maloney's dominance of her country's politics continued. Her far-right Brothers of Italy polled 29% of the vote, defeating the center-left Democratic Party of Eli Schlein by almost five points. And in Austria, the far-right Freedom Party, FPO, was on course for a narrow but unprecedented victory in the European vote. Although there are only a handful of left-of-center governments in office in the EU, there were victories for the Green Labor Alliance in the Netherlands, the socialist opposition in Portugal, and there was a surprise victory in Denmark for the opposition Green Left Party, which finished ahead of the ruling Social Democrats of Matej Fredriksson. In, now, this is interesting. In Slovakia, the ruling smear party of Robert Fico had been expecting to win after the prime minister survived an assassination attempt. Smear has campaigned against the EU's policy of sending arms to Ukraine and its Green Deal plans to tackle climate change. But it lost to the liberal opposition progressive Slovakia party, whose chairman, Mikhail Semica, said voters had sent Mr. Fico's government a clear message that it could not do whatever it wanted. Um, now, that's it, right? All right, well, let's take this off for a minute. Um, if there's one running theme that I'm seeing, it's a lot of rejection of green policies. It, it seems like greens got beat up all across the continent. And it seemed like a lot of politicians who were strongly associated that with that were uh, given a trouncing. Um, from what I understand in Europe, energy prices are through the roof now. In some places it is partly because of the Nord Stream pipeline. Uh, but hey, Jimmy covers this all the time. Uh, we covered it when we were working over there more. Um, you know, I mean, you have the farmers doing manure protests and blocking highways and this neoliberal agenda is just deeply unpopular. Now I'm going to get into this a little bit also with the Claire Daly thing. We haven't covered this a lot. We did a long time ago, 
um, there is there has been an enormous backlash against immigration brewing in Europe for a very long time. And the left has had no response to it other than the usual bigots, racists. That's not an answer. That's not an answer. Now, we people who are have a more serious analysis will usually say, well, these people would not be immigrating if the West would stop bombing and destabilizing their countries. And that is absolutely true. This is not to uh, blame people who are trying to get themselves out of war zones for trying to get their families to safety. But you cannot expect people to have overwhelming numbers of uh, people from a different culture with different customs to come into the midst of their community, in some cases displacing members of the community, and uh, not get a backlash. Now you want to say that is a foul dimension of human nature? Okay. I mean, that and a nickel will get you on the subway, okay? It, it doesn't matter whether you think that's right or wrong. That's true in any part of the world. If 100,000 Americans show up in Shanghai, the Chinese are not going to be very happy about it. It's just human nature to want your environment to stay the same, to want your culture to remain the same. And just screaming bigot at people, you know what that results in? This this i i i warned about this a long time ago we did a segment about this i said eventually people like le pen are going to start to win in europe because the left has not formulated a response to this discontent well it mentioned about halfway through that slide sh slideshow pardon me that uh sarah wagon act who we covered a while back uh did very well um, right. And she is, uh, you know, because they combined a certain left economics with a more hardline immigration yep. stance. She's also the one who talked uh, quite famously at the time uh, about cultural conservatism as opposed to social yep. conservatism. Yep. Yep. You know, promote promote the family while not imposing certain values on people with force. Um, you know that that whole thing. That to me, if you're just talking numbers, if you're talk, if you're analyzing a result like this after the fact, uh, it's not surprising to me uh, that she did well. Uh, she's right. also right. was a strong voice against the Ukraine war, which, as I understand, differs from a lot of the green party positions over there the green over there doesn't mean what it means over here right, um right. uh from what i understand they're more pro ukraine war over there on the green mm -hmm. party line uh than, than we are over here um but i think obviously i mean i i think what you're saying seems to check out in terms of the whole environmental agenda costing votes this time and also it, it we see it here too immigration is front and center in a way that we have yeah. never seen before ever 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 you've never you've never seen immigration consistently rank first or second here in the u.s going right. into a campaign season um and you know like i said far far from an expert on the different races that were run over there it seems like that's becoming more front and center now than ever before in europe as well uh, and so th those seem to be the main takeaways, and those main takeaways are not, as we're going to see in the next sort of uh, segment here, um, they're not necessarily what we would want them to be. And this is why I always caution people, do not assume that because what we talk about and what we care about, uh, don't, don't, don't think that because we care about that, that that is a top concern for right. most people, as I mentioned right. earlier in the show, there's this huge swath of just disaffected, apathetic, marginally interested people. And the trends that move them are the trends that win races, immigration, energy, inflation. Right. These are right. major trends that move major swaths of marginally invested people. That's where elections right. are mostly yep. won and lost. Now, these issues that we talk a ton about, Gaza, these are niche issues. Unfortunately, I wish to God that were not the case. 
and they can swing elections. When you talk about when you talk about localized effects, we're talking about Michigan, we're talking about Dearborn, you're talking about yeah, I see a super chat here. I'll put this up on the screen now, even though it's part of the segment because it's relevant. Uh, you reference the Muslim vote a lot. It's only two or three percent of Michigan, one percent of the U.S. Does it have any effect on our elections? Yes, if it's close enough in a key state like Michigan. Right. So it's not like right. those. It's not that those issues don't matter at all. They can swing a very close race. But if you're looking at major trends where we're analyzing multiple races at at once across an entire continent. Those big things, energy, inflation, immigration, those right. are the big right. things that move large swaths of people. Yeah. And that's I think that I think explains this more than anything else. It's as as in America, so it is in Europe. This is a complete failure of neoliberalism. Neoliberalism is and always has been a kind of neo aristocratic viewpoint where you're uh, the commoners are supposed to defer to their betters whose expertise, supposed expertise in economics and uh, science is supposed to be the final word on how society is to be arranged. And when the people speak out against the agenda, um, they're branded as right-wingers, as uh, being ignorant, as being not properly educated. That is what neoliberalism is. and this is the peasants rising up. They're not going to take it because increasingly that disconnect between the public interest and the aristocratic idea of how people should live are just too far apart. Please clap. <laughs> 